Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Dane channel. And I just wanted to uh, spend a little President's Day time with you. Didn't put a notice out that we were doing this, but thought I would uh, just connect with you. Someone mentioned it. I do have the boys just chilling out here, doing absolutely nothing except waiting for noon hour to come around. And noon hour is when the magic happens, and you wouldn't believe how excited they get over just one little less than a cup of food. So off work today, and uh, thought I would just put up a little, maybe 30 minutes. The time flies when we're on here, so welcome as you're coming on in. Appreciate it. Uh, can't believe already 10 people out here watching. Hi, Piper. Hi, Ava. We got Jump in the Cadillac. Hello. Um, I'm thinking that the dogs would wake up and come and say hello here. So we'll, we'll wait for that for a second. But as you all come on in here, I'm so excited for the progress with what uh, the dog next door named Seven. And uh, Seven is an 11 week old Doberman puppy. And my brand new neighbors that moved in over the winter with COVID, you can barely say hello or interact with them. They are so excited about the puppy. They've met the Great Danes before they got the puppy. And now we've been having some meetings and, and just now, uh, the gentleman in the family, he was out walking the dog and he said, I just brought Finn to the front door and I opened the porch, uh, excuse me, I opened the door and I, I, I said hello to him and he says, hey, can they say hi? Now, granted, it's 22 degrees outside and I'm just in a t-shirt and I said, well, let's just wait till next time and then I thought, no, this is another opportunity. So I hang on, I tell him to hang on, I get a coat on and I get Finn's training collar and his uh, leash and um, training collar, chain, whatever you want to call it. And I take Finn out, and now I'm not even nervous. You saw in the video I put up uh, over the weekend that I was a bit nervous on uh, Saturday when we met um, Seven for the first time with Finn. And Finn came out, and now I'm relaxed. I think that helped the dog relax, and they came together. So we know people came here for, for great things. So is anyone going to come say hi? Finn, come here. Hey. Hi. Okay. There. Told him okay, and he wakes up from his nap. There he is. Stars of the show. Certainly not me. Um, yeah. Hi, buddy. Oh, you're the best. Get your toy. Get your toy. Finn, right here. Get your toy. Get your toy. Come here. Let me see it. Finn. Come here. Finn. Come here. Magic, come. Okay, Magic. Anyway, they're not coming. So hit me with your questions. So many of you are regulars here. There are no questions that you don't know the answers to, but I'm happy to uh, give my opinions. Remember, I'm not an expert. I'm just a Dane owner, like some of you. I've been schooled on here by people and actually done some really good learning. Magic, come. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's the man of the hour, this guy. Maybe the best Great Dane I've ever had right here. I know, super gray. For those of you new, just checking it out, cropped ears. He was going to be a show dog in Oregon. He did not have the lips that were big enough to win in the, in the show ring. And so my breeder stands behind her dogs and basically um, gave a full refund. So Magic came back home, and uh, Jackie was saying, I know you're on my list for a puppy but we could actually give you a seven month old dog coming back from Oregon to Ohio. At this point, the people who had magic stopped taping his ears. This is a six month or more process of taping the ears up. Now here's the beautiful natural ear guys. That's what I, I go for every day I've ever had control over since it was a puppy. He does the old head in the lap trick. I have never had them cropped. So, I, I have to say that um, around the rest of the world, it's a non-issue. You just do not crop. It's illegal. Can't show them that way and all that good stuff. But anyway, I don't like to be too controversial. I just love these dogs and love magic. And now his little bendy ear to me is just a reminder of, of his former career. And you know what he turned into? The best pet Great Dane you could ever have. So magic, I'm seeing some of the questions. So keep them coming in the chat. Um, Magic is six years old now, and in October, he'll turn seven. And in my head, I start to already get nervous about it. So he's seven. And Finn, where are you, Finn? 
Finn's lying down already. Um, Finn was three on November 29th, and Finn is Magic's nephew. So anyway, um, yeah, it is 11.30, and it's um, we're going to feed him right on time at noon. That's what we do. And uh, thank you, Miranda, asking uh, how much they eat. So about 7 o'clock when we get up, they get two level scoops, which is equal to one cup each, so two cups in the morning. Then we go uh, one cup at lunch, and that one's not even full because, frankly, Magic's, Magic's a little bit wide. You know, he's a little bit full. Um, so we go one cup in the middle of the day, and then about exactly 5 o'clock, we go with two more cups. And they go out two to three times during the day and then once at night, and they're good to go. And it's so cold, we're not walking them. Um, Ask about training. So with training, it we went to puppy classes with our first Dane and um, second Dane, same thing, puppy classes at age four month, four months. I, you're probably like looking at the great Dane better than me, so I'm just going to leave this view because this is what he'll do. And now we're into the time where we call it sustenance because if you say F-O-O-D, he knows that word and it's, it's a little crazy. So um, training is just constant repetition. Um, and I just, you know, reinforce the positive and correct the negative behaviors that you may want to change. Here we go. Hi, buddy. Just the sweetest dog ever. Now, granted, I already got slobber on my shirt and dog hair, and that just goes with the territory. So that's what we do. So appreciate all of you for, hopefully some of you have President's Day off. I do. And I don't know what the point is. My wife's working. And so we're just spending it with the dogs, trying not to go down into the workspace too much today. What else? Did I miss any questions up there? I got the training question out of there. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you uh, for my friend Sunil, last name Sunil. Do they get noisy? And yes, they do. So I don't know during COVID how it is around you, but e-commerce and deliveries to the home are ridiculous. And so... They know the sound of the mail truck. They know the sound of a UPS or a FedEx truck. And they wait until that delivery person gets right up to the porch and they kind of go crazy. So we have been correcting that behavior because they could even uh, go through the little glass pane windows on the side. It's, it's a bit of a problem. So a uh, question from uh, super fan Piper in Wisconsin. Piper says the seven that Doberman puppy have natural ears. And in fact, seven does, but the tail is docked. Um, I, my, my sense is that a, a Doberman breeder pretty well takes care of the tails before anyone gets a chance to say whether they do or don't want it docked. By the way, that means cut off. Um, but the ears, a little more option. So that Doberman next door is ears natural. So that's kind of nice. And hello, Elijah. And uh, you've got two wild Great Danes. Yeah, well, you can't have two wild Great Danes. You've got to have consistent training. You want to see my other wild Great Dane? Look at look at this wild Great Dane. Finn is just <laughs> relaxed. Relaxed, aren't you, Finn? Good deal. And let's see. You know, the other thing they do is Heidi bought some uh, really nice cookies from the bakery over the weekend. And we each had one, and then we left them on the counter and went upstairs and did some work around the house. And we came downstairs and found the container on the ground, and someone had demolished the four remaining cookies. And they were really nice with a raspberry filling, luckily not chocolate. And that's what he'll do, and they can reach everything. So you do have to watch out for that, particularly if he's on a little bit of a diet. I mean, I don't know. Can you guys see that he's kind of a little bit wide? I say you can feel his ribs, which is good, but I don't want to make an unnecessary trip to the vet, but we can uh, we can get his weight and see how he's doing. He was 170. He used to be 145, and once we got Finn, he started eating all of Finn's food and gained 30 pounds in no time. So then we, we got after it and started to pay a little more attention. So that's what's going on. So, yeah. It's only 11.30, buddy. It must be uh, late in Australia, and that's why uh, Margaret's not on. I know that's the case. 
I had uh, I had plans for us to possibly do a meetup before COVID hit in the summer. That would have been fun, um, but now we're just strictly online and, and doing all this good stuff. Um, by the way, I do have a separate channel. I used to put those videos here. I did an epic ski trip in January, 18 days. But um, but obviously those videos are not what people tune in for. And with the YouTube algorithm, if you do that, your subsequent videos don't get as many views, doesn't get suggested to as many. And I'm just trying to uh, entertain people who either would love to have a Great Dane but are afraid or never think they could do it or enjoy uh, enjoyed mine somewhat. So now I'll give you the Finn cam. Finn's just happy. Hey, Finn. 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 Hopefully the audio is okay for all of you guys. Oh, what is it, Magic? Yeah, Magic's super gray, and even Finn's getting gray. And the other thing he does, I've shown you on the video, is when it's time for FOOD, He'll start yawning and making a lot of noise with his yawns. It's sort of his passive aggressive way to ask for food. Oops, I said it. Magic, did I say food? I did. Oops, don't worry. It's only a few more minutes till he gets his, uh, gets his stuff. Super. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying it. And uh, I, I, I love doing these live things. I just actually forget to bring them to you. So I'm trying to think what another good story would be for all of you. Yeah, he is watching the time. He is all over it, Piper. Finn, come here, Finn. Now my, my release command when I have these guys on a downstay, which he's not, but they're used to it. Sometimes they'll think they are, um, but I just tell them, okay. So let's see if we can get Finn to release. Finn, okay, okay, come on, okay, Finn, okay, come. No, he's having none of it. He says, I'm comfortable. I'm just laying here. Why are you bothering me? Everything's good, Dad. Why do I need to get up? Not needed. Wow. Then he just had a big bout of flatulence right there. I don't know if that came over, but he just let it rip. Um, when did the two Danes have their last fight? Um, my Danes don't have real fights with each other. Uh, but let me tell you one thing that happened. I was trying to walk both of them about a year ago, maybe a little more. And my neighbor's black lab broke through his invisible fence, which if you're watching from outside the U.S., uh, invisible fence is pretty common here. And I don't know if you guys in the U.S. know it. It's illegal in many countries. You cannot have any kind of radio collar that provides any kind of static or um, a buzz or whatever. So, but this dog broke through the fence. I've got both Danes. That's 300 pounds. I really have a hard time in that setting. So this dog came at me and I just waited and timed it and right, and he was coming straight for the dog. I just pulled them both back right when it happened. He realized that he was getting into something he couldn't handle and went away. So um, that, that, when I talked to the owner later, I said, I can't guarantee what would happen if my dogs got a hold of your dog like that, aggressively coming at them. He says, I wish you would have let them, because I guess that dog's kind of a pain for him or a behavioral problem. But anyway, all good. But yeah, so, you know, one of my most popular videos is um, Great Dane Puppy meets Boxer Puppy. And that was Finn, and that's over 1.4 million views now. That's what kind of blew this thing up and started it. But in that video, I have a prong collar that was left over from a previous Dane, Ferris. I've talked about that dog less than any because he was backyard bred, behavioral problem, fear aggressive, and bit more than three people. Bad news. Ultimately, I had to euthanize the dog when he bit someone on the face. So you have to be careful with these dogs. Um, but that prong collar I was using with Finn as a puppy because it's not actually cruel. The, the prongs, there's many of them. It spreads it out. It, it, um, there's, they're, they're rounded and, but, but people just go crazy because those collars are illegal in, in Germany. You'd be facing a huge fine. I think the UK as well. So dog culture is different around the world. And when you have a video go viral like that, come here, magic, come here. Um, when you have a video go viral like that, you're going to get a lot of people seeing it who have different cultural views. Let me unplug that. Okay. Now you can come here. 
Um, and so prong collar gets a lot of hate and I've put out an entire video reacting to that. I also, um, I also, uh, put in the description that I have evolved and thank you for the learnings and all that sort of thing. So the other thing, um, is that dogs loose in cars is culturally unacceptable in many parts of the world. Whereas in the U S people will throw a dog in the back of their pickup and drive around and all that. So I would have these guys loose in the back of my SUV and I got all kinds of comments and feedback and the people were right because if you get an accident with a dog, it becomes a projectile and the dog's likely going to get killed. You could get severely injured or killed. So that's why I partnered with Kurgo and they sent me the dog harnesses. Now they're not really rated for 170 pound dogs, but I do think they'd be better than anything else. And then Kurgo was nice enough to send me the training collar that I use um, and also the coats for the dogs and all that good stuff. So all those, all those links are in every one of my videos, actually really helpful. So, um, you know, someone's asking here, Danielle, thanks for the question about, is it best to buy them from puppy age to train them not to bite? We'll set the biting aside for a second. I mean, biting's never okay. That, that came from, I believe, miswiring and poor breeding and not testing for temperament first and foremost. So, um, the, uh, I think, you know, magic came to us at age seven months and there's never been a nicer Great Dane. But you know why? It's all about temperament. Um, it's really important. I mean, this guy, there is no better temperament than this dog. And yet, if you go on my channel and watch how he reacts to the cleaning lady when she came into his room unnoticed, he almost jumped over the top of the stall just in a protective mode. So any dog um, has to be watched carefully. So interesting stuff. But I like, um, I like getting them from a puppy just because you're instantly bonding. You're kind of establishing that relationship and who's in charge type thing. Right, Magic? Right? That's right. Right now, you're kind of in charge. 20 more minutes only for him to get his F-O-O-D. Um, yeah, so uh, Matthew Leeper, longtime subscriber and commenter. Thank you for that. Um, is it European or American? Well, Ferris was supposedly European. He was stockier. He had a shorter snout. And uh, bottom line, he was fearful. And that resulted in being afraid and then acting out. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the deal there. So these are American Great Danes. They come from show quality breeding. He has an aunt who won Best of Opposite Sex at Westminster. So basically the number two Great Dane in the country. Uh, which was pretty awesome. And then, uh, yeah, but when I got like Frederick, which was Magic's uncle, he had um, dark hairs in his fawn coat. Fawn is the color that Finn is. And uh, that makes it a show, uh, for showing it's a fault. So I wind up getting, um, I wind up getting the, uh, the great dog that has a slight fault. Okay, so Sebastian, I hope I didn't do false advertising. I'm not going to have the Doberman puppy on here right now, but I was just sharing the two previous videos you can check out where we did have Magic meet the puppy, and then a week later we had Finn meet the puppy. Today, when I had Finn go out and meet um, Seven, the puppy's name Seven of Nine for you Star Trekkers out there, um, Magic was inside howling so bad. Like they're so jealous when they don't get to meet. And I didn't have time to do both today. So that's great. Question about Magic being a therapy dog. Thank you, Jennifer. I, yeah, he's six and a half. I just, we're going to enjoy him for ourselves. I don't really want want to do the therapy thing. If he was two or three, I think I would go through it. And we weren't in COVID. That could work. But yeah, I have such confidence when he meets people. And when I could take him to work, it was just fantastic. So yeah, I would say that Magic is more gentle than Finn, a little less high strung, but Finn's coming along, you know, take a look how, uh, how crazy Finn is. You know, he's just a nut. And guys, if you're not familiar with Great Danes, this is basically what they do. When they're not trying to have F food, um, they're pretty much just lay around. And that, that's what they do. So good stuff. And Piper, now seeing your comment about Kurgo and the heavier weight harnesses, I'll check it out. 
Um, I think that's that's a good idea. So the challenge we have now is Heidi, my wife, would like a little dog. And after seeing Finn meet the puppy, I'm more confident. But there is a point in time where I maybe don't want to have all the complexity of having all these animals and dogs because, you know, we like to vacation and travel once we're able to do that again. Um, and having dogs is, you know, a challenge for that, whether it's a person coming into dog sit or if you're boarding them. I don't know how great that is for everyone. So hello from Florida. I wish I was in warm Florida, but that's about the only thing Florida has to offer for me. I like Ohio and all that stuff. So if you have any more questions, put them in. We're going to be on for about another five or 10 minutes and I will answer any questions you guys have. Um, I could take this upstairs and we could see the kittens, but this isn't the kitten channel. It's the Great Dane channel. But speaking of kittens, I played fetch with Willow for 30 minutes this morning while I laid in bed. Uh, she kept bringing me this little um, toy filled with catnip and I would throw it and within three seconds she was back with it, dropped it on me and um, then just kept scratching me and making me pet her and play with her like there was no sleeping in today on my day off. So hello from England, Sebastian. You can confirm there's pretty strict rules, I think, in England about choke collars, prong collars, electronic training collars. Like there's pretty strict rules about what you can and can't use for training tools uh, for your pets. So um, and uh Person, my friend, Cherish Artist, <laughs> when it's not your real name, it's hard to address people that way. Other pets, I've got two boa constrictors and a ball python in the other room. My one daughter has an African bullfrog. My other daughter has a leopard gecko. And so we have all kinds of pets. Um, I hope we don't have to get any more in that area. If I let my wife handle it, we would have so many pets coming out of our ears, it wouldn't even be funny. Um, so uh, that's great. And uh, Peggy giving a shout out for the mini pincher. Uh, they're great for a small dog. I do. I bet they have a huge attitude. Uh, Anton Nija Gozevska. Thank you. Is Magic my first Great Dane? Oh, heck no. We've had Great Dane since 1992. Started with Brunhilde, our first one. It was very intimidating. Um, I didn't want to get a dog at all. And then we decided to get a dog because. Uh, my wife wanted a dog. I said, well, if we're getting a dog, I grew up with golden retrievers. I said, if we're getting a dog, I want to get a real dog. And so we got this female Dane named Brunhilde from a very good breeder. We went and we met both the parents. We spent time with them, which is really important to do. If you can't meet the parents, you don't know if you're getting a puppy mill dog or anything like that. So let's do that. And then, uh, then we had Frederick, who was another amazing dog. And then we had Ferris, and that's when I started having two Great Danes at the same time, Fred, Frederick and Ferris. Ferris was, um, you know, the one that was having all these challenges behaviorally. behaviorally. Frederick bloated. I had him put down um, when he bloated. He was seven. He had already had his eye removed, and I had already done the bloat surgery on Hilda. So more information than you need. But then we were doing two dogs at a time, so... Ferris was there. Magic came. Ferris and Magic were such buds. They got along so great. They were just friends. We would board them in the same cage and all that good stuff. And then I had to put Ferris down. And two days later, we got Finn from California. And uh, Finn was Magic's sister's puppy. So five Great Danes we've had since 1992. I've learned a little bit with each one. My breeders have been incredibly helpful. Now, I work for Nestle, which owns Purina, which allows me to get Pro Plan, which I think is a great product. If you're going to feed kibble, don't want to get into the raw and all this debate. But it's um, it's a food that all my Danes have thrived on, and I can get it for half price. So you got to do what works for you. Don't give puppy food. You want to always have an adult food that's not too high in protein. You can read on the Internet. So Barb, I don't do any flea protection. Um, maybe I should but no flea protection. And uh, Morris asking, would I ever get a Mastiff? I mean, a Great Dane essentially is in the same family as a Mastiff. So no, if I'm having a big dog, it's this. I did consider an Irish Wolfhound. I think Irish Wolfhounds are fantastic. Um, but the next dog we're going to get, I think, is going to be maybe a French Bulldog or some, Heidi's found some Italian brand no one's ever heard of and uh, might want to get that. 
Carolina Great Danes, and she shows the parents. That sounds like a good start, Danielle. Absolutely. And you can email me. My email is in the description of all my videos, and we can have a further discussion or even a phone call. But um, take your time. If you are getting a dog, take your time. Research the breeder because you only get to do it once, and then you have an animal that's your responsibility. So um, that's a good start. Oh, diatinaceous earth. Very good. Um, we don't have many fleas around here, and now our cats don't go outside, whereas the cats used to, I think, bring them in um, and that sort of thing. So I get a question here from Sebastian about will I adopt? Um, I don't rescue if that, I mean, I would rescue, but it hasn't been what I've done in the past. I wouldn't consider magic an adoption or a rescue. He was within the breeder community. Any good breeder is going to absolutely require the dog come back to them if there's any problems. Um, and so that's what happened with magic. He came to me and it was the best thing ever. And then I still got a puppy later, a fawn puppy, a beautiful fawn puppy in Finn. Who, I mean, these dogs make themselves look so comfortable. It's ridiculous, isn't it? They can fall asleep and get into a comfy position so fast. Magic, what do you want? Hey, let me know in the comments if you think we ought to give Magic his uh, lunch just a little early. And we can do it. We can do it right here on camera if you want. Just going to look at a few more of these comments. Yeah, that yawn, Miranda, is a... I think it's a way to get attention. Matthew Leeper, thanks for feeding Pro Plan. That's awesome. Good stuff. And then Hania, you asked about how much food to give your Great Dane puppy. You know, I start out with, with always multiple meals per day, three meals per day to start with, um, giving them like a half a cup three times a day at first, see how they're doing. If they look super skinny, you know, you increase it. Uh, and then if they start to get a little pudgy, you decrease it, right, Magic? Okay. Who's going to who's gonna say whether Magic gets to have lunch now or later? Uh-oh, a lot of early lunches. Okay, maybe that's what we'll do. So here, what I want you to see is the reaction. So are you guys watching? Here's what we do. He looks like he's starving. Yeah, he always does. Now, that's the cute face that they do to say, Oh, couldn't you please just let me have some food? Do you want to eat? Magic, do you want to eat? Well, once you say that, guys, you have to. So come with me. I, I'm doing this on my MacBook, so it's not exactly like a portable camera. Okay, let's go eat. Let's go. We watch. He'll, he'll wait for me. Watch this. He'll come back and check and say, are you really coming? Yeah, we're really coming. Let's go. I'm coming. The new kitchen, a little messy, but hey. Now Finn won't even come back here to necessarily eat. You're there. So guys, this is the dog room if you haven't seen it. It's kind of fun. We'll turn on, get a little light here. It's still wintry, but I've got two like 54 by 36 inch stalls. It fits a full size bed that out there two of them sleep on. Now let me cover one thing. I do not elevate the bowls. Elevate your bowls if you'd like. Don't elevate them if you don't. It's not scientifically proven one way or the other if that helps or hurts with bloat. Uh, my first two Danes bloated, and I had both of their food elevated. So then I like this. We come over to the simple human storage container. The handle magnetically stays in the top, which is awesome. It almost holds a 34-pound bag. But literally here, we're just it's just a little teaser portion for lunch. That's all we're talking about. Now... You say, do you think he wants it? I mean, look at the drool. And then he just sits. Now watch this. Wait. I can hear the drops falling on the... Okay. Guys, he is so good. So good. All right. I'm going to let him eat. He'll come see me in a minute. Well, how was that? 
Oh, yeah, what do you say, Finn? Do you want some food? All right, maybe we're going to give Finn a little food. I know I should have done this on my iPhone now in hindsight. All right, Finn, you ready? We'll give you that. So um, just while I'm here, I may as well plug this bed. This is that Karanda indestructible bed. Underneath is an aluminum frame, you can see. Uh, and it's indestructible. So if you got a dog that chews, you get this bed with just a um, a vinyl, you know, heavy duty vinyl kind of trampoline and aluminum. Then they don't chew that. Then when they grow out of the chewing, I added the topper and then I added the bolster. Magic's just got a memory foam bed that kind of works great for them. Um, so that <laughs> was that not enough? Was that not enough? Well, that's all there is. Now you can really see his ears when they stand up in the little curly that we get. So it's pretty good stuff. Uh, so we got our early lunch and it wasn't that early. It's, oh, it's, it's now it's just uh, five minutes till or what have you. So really good. Um, so we have had six dogs total, Sebastian, thanks for asking. In the middle of Hilda and Frederick, I think it was, we got... Jewel. I don't talk about Jewel. Jewel was a Bichon Frise, lived to be 14 years old. And um, and uh, Jewel was great, but she was almost not a dog. She was a person. She just wanted to be with people and all that good stuff. So these stalls are fantastic. If I have people over and I want to close these up, we can do that. They don't necessarily love being in here, but if I have people over who are afraid of dogs or not comfortable with big dogs, my policy is to put them away at first. And then um, if they are wanting to come out, we'll bring Magic out first and then we'll bring Finn out later. Sometimes it's directly related to how much wine we drink. But anyway, that's another story. But we don't need to keep them tied up. Can I show you guys one more thing, which is the dog door? I think that's pretty cool. So... And I had to put an extra lock because Finn figured out how to unlock these things. But who wants to go outside? Who wants to go outside? Come on. Okay, come on. Come. Who's coming? So then they go right out there, this little ramp. And that goes right out to a fenced backyard, which is just easy. And they got, I have the AstroTurf. I know the laundry room's a mess. Bear with me. So there, you got more than I was planning to give you today. Pretty, uh, pretty fantastic. And then we can see, oh, I know what Magic's doing. Hang on. Magic came out to eat snow, of course. Because that's what Magic does. It's snowing today, so he's got a fresh batch to eat. And he's never happier than when he's having a little bit of snow. We got Heidi some Valentine's daffodils. Finn, what are you doing? Oh, magic. So even if he doesn't have to go to the bathroom, he'll go out there just to eat snow. All right, let me put this thing back down here. We can... See what comments came in while we were doing all that stuff, huh? Uh, yeah, uh, these dogs, you saw how low those gates were on their, uh, they've never jumped over the gates. It doesn't take much. And even like at the stairs to go upstairs so the ca they can't get the cats, the gate is literally a foot and a half tall and they just won't go over it. So that's fantastic. <laughs> Piper. My native frozen turd. You don't want him to do that like an icicle. Oh. Boxer puppy. I love boxers. I think they have a great uh, personality. I think they're like, you know, smaller Great Danes, basically. So, Bandit, I see you. Thank you for that. Hania getting their first Great Dane puppy. You're going to have to send me some videos. Send me some puppy videos, and we'll feature that puppy. That's always fun. 
Yeah, and give it a like. Give this thing a like. Let's blow it up. And you know what you guys could also do is share this in your social media feed. So Finn's a licker. He'll lick my face, whereas Magic won't. So that's that. Nope. The only, Oh, so I grew up with Golden Retrievers. Um, we had the Great Dane to start, Hilda. Then we had a Bichon Frise. Then we got Frederick because a Bichon Frise does not fill the void for a dog for me. Oh, here we can get a nice look at these amazing ears, guys. They're like velvet. Absolutely like velvet. I mean, that's... And unfortunately, when they crop them, they cut off almost two-thirds of the ear to make them stand up. So that's why I don't really like cropping. Um, I don't make it my mission in life to uh, go after people who do it. I just don't do it. But there, people are amazed when they see how, um, the, how beautiful this ear is. And it's just so soft. It's just so soft. Isn't it? Well, we better let magic in. Hang on. Stand by. I got to get magic in. Standing by. I'll be waiting. Coming back. Magic's excited. Okay, we didn't lose anyone. Good. Was that good snow? Was that good snow? Huh? Hey, was that good snow? Mm. So then Magic's just waiting at the door when I go to let him out. Finn instantly goes out, and now I've propped the door so when Finn's done outside, he'll be able to just come back in on his own, but it's a little too cold to keep it that way. Very good, very good. All right, guys, the time has flown. Thanks for so many people tuning in. You'll be able to see the whole thing uh, on the channel here shortly. And we keep uploading on weekends and Wednesdays. Um, I do see another question coming in, so I'll address that. Do they ever get aggressive? Yes, they get aggressive. If you have a stranger come into your yard or you have someone come to your door and you don't welcome them in, they will get aggressive. Uh, Koro asks that. If you check my channel, Search uh, cleaning lady surprises Great Dane, and you'll see what happens, how they could be aggressive. So you've got to be all over these guys. Watch the hair go up on their legs. See the tail wag. Bottom line is I don't trust any dog. You cannot trust any dog. You have to treat them all with great respect. Realize that anything could happen and know, know what's going on there. So, um, yeah. Thanks so much. Anyway, I just really appreciate it. 21,000 subscribers. It's ridiculous how many people are out there interested in Danes. And I am so lucky to be able to have these guys and be, have them be part of my life. And, you know, you only get a brief amount of time with them. That's the sad part about it. Uh, they, are, they are gentle giants, Janelle, but only if they're bred correctly. You have got to breed for temperament. So you want to meet the parents. You want to see other puppies from previous litters if that's possible. And then definitely spend some time with the litter and make sure. So it's really uh, it's really important. Anyway, we upload on weekends and Wednesdays. I am running out of material when it comes to COVID. So this may count for this week's midweek update. But with that, I'll just say what I always say. Have a great day.